First off, I want to make it clear I'm not promoting the drinking of alcohol. There are some potential benefits to small daily intake of one to two drinks per day. If you want your child to grow, your child to grow, your child to grow. If you want your child to grow, give them the child of pork or sing But I can tell you a safer way to get the same benefits without any of the drawbacks. Not only that, but to get them to a much greater degree. This all comes back to our old friend, the Krebs cycle. When you drink alcohol, what happens? Most of it gets filtered in the liver, but some of it does get into the brain. This is what causes the intoxicative effects. But interestingly, this process also degrades the alcohol into acetic acid. But first, it degrades it into acetaldehyde, which causes hangovers. Thankfully, acetic acid itself does not have this effect. I've talked a few times now about the humble vinegar molecule and how it can restore cells from insulin resistance. And insulin resistance in the brain is essentially the very definition of Alzheimer's disease, which is often called type 3 diabetes. While vinegar has many benefits, especially to mitochondrial rich parts of the body, increasing the acidity to your body is very bad for the health, especially to the kidneys. The kidney must ultimately deacidify the entire body from all CO2 we produce through cellular respiration, and it does so in a way that's destructive to the kidney over time. This is why the kidney always declines in function as we age, and typically to a much greater degree than other organs. Thankfully, we can arrest this process a bit by taking in bicarbonate. I prefer taking potassium bicarbonate with any vinegar I supplement. You can also use sodium bicarbonate, but be aware it has 1200 milligrams of salt per half teaspoon. This is far more than most people should be adding to the diet. Another way acetate helps is by neutralizing poisons caused by consuming linoleic acid, especially from eating fried foods. While it is really linoleic acid that is the culprit here, some will still try to blame a quote unquote high fat diet on the problem. ALA, another PUFA, also has the same effects in the brain. While it's touted as an omega-3 acid, in reality only a small percentage of this can be converted to EPA or DHA, and these are the fatty acids which your brain can actually use as building blocks. Consuming EPA and DHA directly have a positive effect on inflammation, and they are most common in fatty fish. Fish oils should probably be avoided due to oxidation, but sardines and other canned fish seem to be free of this issue, though obviously fresh caught wild fish would always be preferable. Yet if I had to guess, I would say that the main mechanism of acetic acid benefiting the brain is through rescuing the mitochondria. Acetic acid has also been noted to greatly reduce the incidence of cancer in those who work in vinegar producing factories most likely through the same mechanism. The mitochondria are also likely responsible for the fact that neurons and cardiac muscle cells very seldom become cancerous cells. If you google it, you will find the common answer is that post-mitotic cells don't divide, therefore can't be cancerous. This answer doesn't adequately explain what we see though, because other post-mitotic cells do become cancerous and they become cancerous much more frequently than the neurons do. But you do have to keep in mind that science is not a perfect process. How does a scientist know what's true? Well, all facts begin as dreams dreamt by a wizard. If the wizard crosses the path of a scorned widow, then he shares it at the town council. Now it is a hypothesis, and it's time to drown the wizard. For example, Skeletal muscle cells that are post-mitotic can still become cancerous and they do so far more often than neurons or cardiac cells do. This is yet more data that confirms the metabolic cancer theory. If we believe the theory that cancer is a phenomenon of nuclear DNA error, then really any cell should be able to become cancerous at any time. We'd still expect to see that happen much less often in these post-mitotic cells because the telomere length is shorter, but on the other hand, the metabolic theory perfectly explains why these cells are basically immune to cancer. 
That's because neurons have more mitochondria than any other cell in the body, and cancer is caused by a metabolic derangement of cells forcing them to switch to fermentation for energy production. That being the case, it is hard for a neuron to totally run out of energy. It's also hard for a neuron to turn to the Warburg effect, or fermentation, because with that many mitochondria, the cell would simply melt from all the byproducts being produced. In a cell with fewer mitochondria, the byproducts of fermentation can actually be used by the cell in the growth and replication of the cell. This kind of fermentation can fuel the creation of the amino acids that cancer cells need in order to multiply. This is also how the fermentation of milk to yogurt enriches the protein content of the end product by approximately 25%. Essentially, cancer cells can become independent operators and quickly evolve towards the same modes of growth as single-cell bacteria. So if you want to avoid dementia, cancer, and a myriad of other chronic diseases, your mitochondria are one of the best ways to affect change. A few things that will help your mitochondria are a low-carb diet, fasting, phototherapy, vinegar supplementation, and to a lesser degree, exercise. Another area where mitochondrial health shines is when it comes to burning calories. I'm going to talk about this in more detail later, but for now, take a look at this little clip that talks about the obesity rates in Switzerland and how many calories they eat as compared to people in the United States. This line here, even below France, is uh, Switzerland they're down at about 5% by 1990. And so you say, well, the Americans must have been overeating by 1990, right? Um, or even before, I mean, we would have had to been eating overeating by 1970 really um, to be this far ahead of the curve. And so do um, were Americans eating uh, more as the obesity epidemic started? And in fact, they clearly were not. Um, in fact, especially compared to Switzerland, um, between 1961 and 1970, uh, the Swiss were going through an extra 500 calories per day compared to Americans, right? So the lean Swiss, um, who are at 5% obesity by 1990, um, have been eating this huge amount of calories all along and they never became obese, right? And so that's, um, so that's, that's a problem for the calories theory of obesity. No, 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 let it ring. No, it could be important. More important than fondue? I'd make the argument that nothing is more important than fondue. Hello? I'm fine. But Manuel will eat your fondue and his fondue. No fondue for you. You get no fondue. You fondue? No can do. 